Ahivika IAST, Ahivika is one of the Nastika or heterodox schools of Indian philosophy. Purportedly founded in the 5th century BCE by Makali Gosala, it was a Sramana movement and a major rival of early Buddhism and Jainism. Ahivikas were organized renunciates who formed discrete communities. Original scriptures of the Ahivika school of philosophy may once have existed, but these are currently unavailable and probably lost. Their theories are extracted from mentions of Ahivikas in the secondary sources of ancient Indian literature. Scholars question whether Ahivika philosophy has been fairly and completely summarized in these secondary sources, as they were written by groups such as the Buddhists and Jains competing with and adversarial to the philosophy and religious practices of the Ahivikas. It is therefore likely that much of the information available about the Ahivikas is inaccurate to some degree, and characterizations of them should be regarded carefully and critically. The Ahivika school is known for its niyati fate, doctrine of absolute determinism, the premise that there is no free will, that everything that has happened, is happening and will happen is entirely preordained and a function of cosmic principles. Ahivikas considered the karma doctrine as a fallacy. Ahivika metaphysics included a theory of atoms similar to the Vaisheshika school, where everything was composed of atoms, qualities emerged from aggregates of atoms, but the aggregation and nature of these atoms was predetermined by cosmic forces. Ahivikas were atheists. They believed that in every living being is an Atman, a central premise of Hinduism and Jainism, founded in what is now the northern Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. Ahivika philosophy reached the height of its popularity during the rule of the Mauryan emperor Bindusara, around the 4th century BCE. This school of thought thereafter declined, but survived for nearly 2,000 years through the 14th century CE in the southern Indian states of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. The Ahivika philosophy, along with the Karvaka philosophy, appealed most to the warrior, industrial and mercantile classes of ancient Indian society. Etymology and meaning Ahivika, Ahivika, Sanskrit, Ahivika is derived from Ajiva, Ajiva, Ajiva which literally means, livelihood, lifelong, mode of life. The term Ahivika means those following special rules with regard to ayivlihood, sometimes connoting religious mendicants. In ancient Sanskrit and Pali texts, asivagam Tamil for ahivika or ahivikam can be split as aasu plus eevu plus agam, where aasu means errorless, verified, and available knowledge. Eevu means solutions, and agam means the place. Ahivika means a place where solutions are provided for problems. The name Ahivika for an entire philosophy resonates with its core belief in no free will and complete niyati, literally, inner order of things, self command, predeterminism, leading to the premise that good simple living is not a means to salvation or moksha, just a means to true livelihood, predetermined profession, and way of life. The name came to imply that school of Indian philosophy which lived a good simple mendicant-like livelihood for its own sake and as part of its predeterministic beliefs, rather than for the sake of after life or motivated by any soteriological reasons. Some scholars spell ahivika as ahivika. History Origins <inaudible> 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 Ahivika philosophy is credited in ancient texts of Buddhism and Jainism to Makali Gosala, a contemporary of the Buddha and Mahavira. Exact origins of Ahivika is unknown, but generally accepted to be the 5th century BCE. Primary sources and literature of the Ahivikas is lost, or yet to be found. Everything that is known about Ahivika history and its philosophy is from secondary sources, such as the ancient and medieval texts of India. Inconsistent fragments of Ahivika history is found mostly in Jain texts such as the Bhagavati Sutra and Buddhist texts such as the Samanyafala Sutta, and Buddhahosa's commentary on Samanyafala Sutta, with a few mentions in Hindu texts such as Vayu Purana. The Ahivikas reached the height of their prominence in the late 1st millennium BCE, then declined, yet continued to exist in South India until the 14th century CE, as evidenced by inscriptions found in southern India. Ancient texts of Buddhism and Jainism mention a city in the 1st millennium BCE named Savathi Sanskrit as the hub of the Ahivikas, it was located near Ayodhya in what is now the North Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. 
In later part of the Common Era, inscription suggests that the Ahivikas had a significant presence in the South Indian state of Karnataka, prominently in Kolar district and some places of Tamil Nadu. The Ahivika philosophy spread rapidly in ancient South Asia, with a Sangha Geham community center for Ahivikas on the island now known as Sri Lanka and also extending into the western state of Gujarat by the 4th century BCE, the era of the Maurya Empire. Classification in Hindu philosophy Reap refers to Ahivikas as a distinct heterodox school of Indian tradition. Raju states that, Ahivikas and Karvakas can be called Hindus, and adds that, the word Hinduism has no definite meaning. Epigraphical evidence suggests that Emperor Ashoka, in the 3rd century BCE, considered Ahivikas to be more closely related to the schools of Hinduism than to Buddhists, Jainas or other Indian schools of thought. Biography of Makali Gosala Makali Gosala Pali, Sanskrit Gosala Mascaraputra, c. 484 BCE is generally considered as the founder of the Ahivika movement. Some sources state that Gosala was only a leader of a large Ahivika congregation of ascetics, but not the founder of the movement himself. The Swiss Indologist Jarl Charpentier and others suggest the Ahivika tradition existed in India well before the birth of Makali Gosala, citing a variety of ancient Indian texts. Gosala was born in Magadha and was the son of Manka, a professional mendicant. His mother was Bada. His name Gosala cowshed, refers to his humble birthplace. While Bada was pregnant, she and her husband Mankali, the Manka, came to the village of Saravana, where dwelt a wealthy householder Gobahula. Mankali left his wife and his luggage in Gobahula's cowshed Gosala. Since he could find no shelter elsewhere the couple continued to live in a corner of the cowshed, and it was there that Bada gave birth her child. Gosala is described in ancient texts as a contemporary of Mahavira, the 24th Tirthankara of Jainism, and of Gautama Buddha. The Jain Bhagavati Sutra refers to him as Gosala Mankaliputta, son of Mankali. The text depicts Gosala as having been a disciple of Mahavira's for a period of six years, after which the two had a falling out and parted ways. According to the Bhagavati Sutra, Makali Gosala met with Mahavira again later in life, but Gosala asserted to Mahavira that he was not the same person. Makali Gosala referred to the example of a sesame plant which had been pulled up, and had temporarily died, but it had been replanted and thus reanimated, becoming once more living, while the seven pods had developed. Gosala declared that the original Gosala who was Mahavira's companion once was dead, and that the soul now inhabiting the apparent Gosala in front of him was a reanimated, completely different Gosala. This argument was declared a form of sophistry by Mahavira, and this led to a significant break in the relations between the two. Topic. Inscriptions and caves Several rock-cut caves belonging to Ahivikas are dated to the times of the Mauryan Emperor Ashoka r. 273 BC to 232 BC. These are the oldest surviving cave temples of ancient India, and are called the Barabar Caves in Jehanabad district of Bihar. The Barabar Caves were carved out of granite, has a highly polished internal cave surfaces, and each consists of two chambers, the first is a large rectangular hall, the second is a small, circular, domed chamber. These were probably used for meditation. Topic. Reliability of sources Ahivikas competed with and debated the scholars of Buddhism, Jainism and Hinduism. The Ahivika movement is primarily from historical references left behind in Jain and Buddhist sources, that may therefore be hostile to it. It is unknown to what degree the available non-Ahivika sources reflect the actual beliefs and practices of the Ahivikas. Most of what is known about them was recorded in the literature of rival groups. Modern scholars question the reliability of the secondary sources, and whether intentional distortions for dehumanization and criticism was introduced into the records. More recent work by scholars suggests that the Ahivika were perhaps misrepresented by Jain and Buddhist sources. Johannes Bronckhorst's claim is that, whereas the Jains teach that one can both stop the influx of new karma and rid oneself of old karma through ascetic practice, Gosala taught that one could only stop the influx of new karma. 
Ascetic practice can be effective in preventing further karmic influx, which helps to explain the otherwise inexplicable fact that the Ahivikas did practice asceticism. T. He popularity of the Ahivika doctrine in ancient times, such that it could rival that of both Jainism and Buddhism, also makes sense if this doctrine was really not so radically different from these traditions as its presentation in Jain and Buddhist sources suggests. Paul Dundas states that the Jain and Buddhist texts cannot be considered reliable source of Ahivika history and philosophy, because it seems doubtful whether a doctrine of Ahivikas which genuinely advocated the lack of efficacy of individual effort could have formed the basis of a renunciatory path to spiritual liberation, and that, the suspicion must be that the Jains and Buddhists deliberately distorted Ahivika doctrine for their own polemical purposes. In contrast, other scholars suggest that at least the common elements found about Ahivikas in Jain and Buddhist literature may be considered, because Jainism and Buddhism were two different, competing and conflicting philosophies in ancient India. Philosophy Absolute determinism and no free will The problems of time and change was one of the main interests of the Ahivikas. Their views on this subject may have been influenced by Vedic sources, such as the hymn to Kala time in Atharvaveda. Both Jaina and Buddhist texts state that Ahivikas believed in absolute determinism, absence of free will, and called this niyati. Everything in human life and universe, according to Ahivikas, was predetermined, operating out of cosmic principles, and true choice did not exist. The Buddhist and Jaina sources describe them as strict fatalists, who did not believe in karma. The Ahivika's philosophy held that all things are preordained, and therefore religious or ethical practice has no effect on one's future, and people do things because cosmic principles make them do so, and all that will happen or will exist in future is already predetermined to be that way. No human effort could change this niyati and the karma ethical theory was a fallacy. James Lochtefeld summarizes this aspect of Ahivika belief as, "...life and the universe is like a ball of pre-wrapped up string, which unrolls until it was done and then goes no further." Reap states that the Ahivika's belief in predeterminism does not mean that they were pessimistic. Rather, just like Calvinists' belief in predeterminism in Europe, the Ahivikas were optimists. The Ahivikas simply did not believe in the moral force of action, or in merits or demerits, or in afterlife affected because of what one does or does not do. Actions had immediate effects in one's current life but without any moral traces, and both the action and the effect was predetermined. According to the Ahivikas, Makali Gosala seems to have combined the ideas of older schools of thought into an eclectic doctrine. He appears to have believed in niyati destiny, svabhava nature, and sangati change, and possibly paranama, which may have prompted other philosophical schools to label him variously as ahatuvedan, vainayikavadan, anianavadan, and isarakaranavadan. According to him all beings undergo development paranama. This culminates in the course of time samsarasuddhi in final salvation to which all beings are destined under the impact of the factors of niyati destiny, bhava nature, and sangati change. As such destiny does not appear as the only player, but rather chance or indeterminism plays equal part in his doctrine. He thus subscribed to Nyativada fatalism only in the sense that he thought that some future events like salvation for all were strictly determined. <laughs> Ahivikas and theism Ahivikas were an atheistic philosophy. They did not presume any deity as the creator of the universe, or as prime mover, or that some unseen mystical end was the final resting place of the cosmos. In later texts, the Tamil Nilakechi, a story of two divinities, Akali and Okali, relates the Ahivikas instructed men in the scriptures. Ahivikas believed that in every being there is a soul. Atman. However, unlike Jains and various orthodox schools of Hinduism that held that soul as formless, Ahivikas asserted that soul has a material form, one that helps meditation. They also believed that the soul passes through many births and ultimately progresses unto its predestined nirvana salvation. Basham states, that some texts suggest evidence of Vaishnavism-type devotional practices among some Ahivikas. <laughs> Atomism Ahivikas developed a theory of elements and atoms similar to the Vaisheshika school of Hinduism. 
Everything was composed of minuscule atoms, according to Ahivikas, and qualities of things are derived from aggregates of atoms, but the aggregation and nature of these atoms was predetermined by cosmic forces. The description of Ahivikas atomism is inconsistent between those described in Buddhist and Hindu texts. According to three Tamil texts, the Ahivikas held there exist seven kaya Sanskrit, kaya assemblage, collection, elemental categories, padavi kaya earth, apo kaya water, teho kaya fire, veo kaya air, sukha joy, dukkha sorrow, and jiva life. The first four relate to matter, the last three non-matter. These elements are akata that which is neither created nor destroyed, vanja barren, that which never multiplies or reproduces and have an existence independent of the other. The elements, asserts a Hivika theory in the Tamil text Manamakalai, are made of paramanu atoms, where atoms were defined as that which cannot be further subdivided, that which cannot penetrate another atom, that which is neither created nor destroyed, that which retains its identity by never growing nor expanding nor splitting nor changing, yet that which moves, assembles and combines to form the perceived. The Tamil text of Ahivikas asserts that this coming together of atoms can take diversity of forms, such as the dense form of a diamond, or a loose form of a hollow bamboo." Everything one perceives, states the atomism theory of Ahivikas, was mere juxtapositions of atoms of various types, and the combinations occur always in fixed ratios governed by certain cosmic rules, forming skanda molecules, building blocks. Atoms, asserted the Ahivikas, cannot be seen by themselves in their pure state, but only when they aggregate and form Buddha's objects. They further argued that properties and tendencies are characteristics of the objects. The Ahivikas then proceeded to justify their belief in determinism and no free will by stating that everything experienced, sukha joy, dukkha sorrow, and jiva life, is mere function of atoms operating under cosmic rules. Reap states that the details of the Ahivika's theory of atomism provided the foundations of later modified atomism theories found in Jain, Buddhist and Hindu traditions. <laughs> Antinomian ethics Another doctrine of Ahivika's philosophy, according to Buddhist texts, was their antinomian ethics, that is there exist, no objective moral laws. Buddhaghosa summarizes this view as, there is neither cause nor basis for the sins of living beings and they become sinful without cause or basis. There is neither cause nor basis for the purity of living beings and they become pure without cause or basis. All beings, all that have breath, all that are born, all that have life, are without power, or strength, or virtue, but are the result of destiny, chance and nature, and they experience joy and sorrow in six classes." Despite this ascribed premise of antinomian ethics, both Jain and Buddhist records note that Ahivikas lived a simple ascetic life, without clothes and any material possessions. Tamil literature on Ahivikas suggests that they practiced ahimsa and a vegetarian lifestyle. Arthur Basham notes that Buddhist and Jaina texts variously accuse Ahivikas of immorality, unchastity and worldliness, but they also acknowledge the confusion among Buddhists and Jainas when they observed the simple, ascetic lifestyle of Ahivikas. <laughs> <laughs> scriptures The Ahivika had a fully elaborate philosophy, produced by its scholars and logicians, but those texts are lost. Their literature evolved over the centuries, like other traditions of Indian philosophy, through the medieval era. The Pali and Prakrit texts of Buddhism and Jainism suggest that Ahivika theories were codified, some of which were quoted in commentaries produced by Buddhist and Jaina scholars. The main texts of the Ahivikas included the Ten Purvas, eight Mahanimitas, two Magas, and the Anpatu Katir. The Mahanimitas of Ahivikas, claims Bhagavati Sutra, was extracted from the teachings Gosala received from Mahavira, when he was a disciple. The belief of Ahivikas in absolute determinism and influence of cosmic forces led them to develop extensive sections in their Mahanimitas texts on mapping the sun, moon, planets, stars, and their role in astrology and fortune telling. <laughs> influence Iziva states that the ideas of Ahivika influenced Buddhism and various schools of Hinduism. Reap states an example of an influential Ahivika theory was its theory on atomism. Basham suggests Ahivikas may have possibly influenced the medieval-era doctrines of Dvaita Vedanta sub-school of Hinduism. 
Topic conflict between Ahivikas, Buddhists and Jaina According to the 2nd century CE text Ashokavadana, the Mauryan emperor Bindusara and his chief queen Shubhadrangi were believers of this philosophy, that reached its peak of popularity during this time. Ashokavadana also mentions that after his conversion to Buddhism, Bindusara's son Ashoka issued an order to kill all the Ahivikas in Pundravadana, enraged at a picture that depicted Gautama Buddha in a negative light. Around 18,000 followers of the Ahivika sect were executed as a result of this order. An earlier Jaina text, the Bhagavati Sutra, similarly mentions a debate, disagreement, and then coming to blows between factions led by Mahavira and by Gosala. Topic see also Ajnana Astika and Nastika Atomism Atheism Karvaka Determinism Topic Notes Topic References Basham, A. L. 1951. History and Doctrines of the Ahivikas, Second Ed. Delhi, India, Multilal Banarsidas reprint, 2002. ISBN 81-208-1204-2, originally published by Luzik and Company Limited, London, 1951. Balsarowitz, Peter, 2015. Early Asceticism in India, Ahivakism and Jainism, 1st ed. Routledge. p. 368. ISBN 9781317538530. Jayatili, K. N. Early Buddhist Theory of Knowledge, 1st ed. London, George Allen and Onwin Ltd. p. 524. Warder, Anthony K. Lokayata, Ahivaka, and Anyana Philosophy. A Course in Indian Philosophy, 2nd ed. Delhi, Mutilal Banarsidas Publishers. pp. 32-44. ISBN 9788120812450. Topic external links Doctrines and History of the Ahivikas, University of Cumbria, UK The Ahivikas BM. Barua 1920, University of Calcutta, West Bengal A new account of the relations between Mahavira and Gosala, Helen M. Johnson, The American Journal of Philology, Vol. 47, No. 1 1926, pages 74–82 Rock Cut Cave Halls of Ahivikas Government of Bihar, India Ahivikas in Malar, South Kosala, Inscriptions and Artwork Related to Ahivikas in Chhattisgarh, India, by Ed Murphy Harvard Law School. Ahivikas in Manamakalai, Rao Bahadur Iyengar translated from Tamil, Madras University, pages 54-57 Ahivika, A New Dictionary of Religions, Blackwell Reference 1995, Editor, John R. Hinnells.